Hello and welcome to TXN TV. I'm Anthony Klein and today we're joined by uh, Rob Chittenden. Hi Anthony, I'm on location in my office today. Excellent, I like your office. And uh, Dave Jackson from uh, Sunny Summers. Hi Anthony. Hi. And, uh, and Peter Rui from, uh, from Auckland. How are you Peter? Hey gentlemen, how are we all? I, I think we're well and um, mostly well. The, um, the, we'll find out soon, but the, uh, the, the, what, the first topic for today is the challenge that we're, we're starting to see. And that is, as, as the world starts to open up, the uh, consumers start to demand and there's a need to replenish and it's a bit of a race. So uh, a lot of companies have to go from pretty much a 10% a or zero production levels at the moment, not back to the previous levels, even higher. So they have to go to 100% to 200% of their, their previous volumes. And, uh, and this is a big preparation requirement. So how do, how do we do that? And, uh, and the, we apply our lean thinking. And the first step is to understand what we call tact time. So tact is spelled T-A-K-T. And it's, the, um, it's, the, it's like the, the baton that a conductor holds. It's how fast the uh, production line or the process needs to run. So if we're running uh, two units a day or 200 units a day, then, uh, then that, is the, that is the tact time. So for example, you, how you calculate it is you, uh, you, you get the available minutes or time in the day, you divide it by the quantity you need, and that gives you an average time per quantity that you need to pass one along. And, uh, and that's how you formulate the tact time. So for example, if you've got uh, 480 minutes in a day and, uh, and there's uh, 240 units, then 480 divided by 240 is two minutes a unit. And, uh, and likewise, if you've got, um, if, you, if you're making eight units a day, then that's one an hour. And so, but if you go to uh, 16 units a day, then that's one every 30 minutes. And so this tack time is the first step to, to help set up your new production line or your modified production line. And, um, and Dave, how do, we, how do we do that? What's the next step? Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Um, I'm actually going to be doing this at a client next week, setting up a, a work cell. Uh, generally, once you know the tack time, it's really valuable information because obviously you, you get to understand your customer demand. But what you also need to do is actually work out how long it takes to make the, the widget that you're producing. Once you know how long it takes to make that widget, you can divide, let's say on your example, we were making one part every minute uh, and we knew that that widget we want, uh, takes about eight minutes to make. Uh, and if we, if, we wanted to, if we want to get it out every minute, we need eight workstations or eight operators. Mm -hmm. So once we know that, we can then start to look at the work, the, the actual layout and the design. And obviously we have to take the current restrictions into place with the layout and the, the, um, the distancing. But then we can have a look at whether we want to set up a U-shaped cell or a straight line cell and really work out what's the best determination for us. So there's different pros and cons for the type of cell, but generally we, we like to set up U-shaped cells because for the actual value-added operators, it, it really reduces the amount of motion that they're walking within the line. And you can upscale or downscale the line accordingly from a, from a, a tact or a volume perspective. The other really important thing about a, um, a U-shaped cell is it separates the value-added workers from the inventory control and you can deliver the products from the back end side. So, um, so there's a lot of, of work that we can be doing to meet our new customer demand. So definitely something that we can, we can help you with. Fantastic. Hey, uh, sorry. <laughs> David, just, just on that note, a lot of discussion happening both here in New Zealand and Australia with regards to workplace distancing. Yes. How would you see that affecting the development of, say, a cell uh, for a customer? Oh, well, definitely we obviously have to adhere to the 1.5 metre or the 2 metre, let's say, to put some, um, some further distancing uh, measures in place. Uh, and it's really about putting in some work in progress. So putting in some um, you know, gravity-fed conveyors uh, so that people don't have to walk to pick up components. So, in this case, inventory is actually our best friend because we can actually put a few parts in between each operator to, to reduce the amount of motion. And we're not talking hundreds of parts, we're just talking a few parts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically just to provide some form of buffer. Absolutely. 
And of course, we we'll, we need to be wearing you know gloves and uh, and and having the right PPE uh, equipment installed as well to make sure that we're uh, of course adhering to the to the safety guidelines. Awesome, thanks for that. No worries. Yeah. That's a uh, that's a whole new world of uh, first in first out flow in between uh, workstations. Absolutely. Now, um, but uh, from from first in first out and uh, ramping up quickly to uh, keeping the business going and uh, personal Kanban. Rob, what's uh, how do we apply personal Kanban and what is it? Yeah, great question, Anthony, and it's something that I've been uh, applying for quite a few uh, years now and. I was able to, uh, a few years ago, go to uh, Las Vegas and see one of those big lean conferences where all everyone comes together and uh, it's just lean for three days. So uh, one of the breakout groups was uh, Jim Benson, who is a Shinzo Prize winner uh, for his book on personal Kanban. Um, so personal Kanban, here's, a, here's the book that he wrote. Um, so if you can get your hands on that, it's a nice step-by-step -step guide about how to apply a ticketed task and visualising your work and getting our workflow happening with your tasks. So as we all get a lot and we might have a to-do list, this is just expanding that and, and getting a little bit uh, around that. So what is it? In a, in a nutshell, personal Kanban is a, a system of uh, limiting your work in progress and a, a tool to enhance your productivity so that you can get more done more effectively. Um, because multi-skilling is something we talk about a lot, but really, if you focus on one task at a time, you tend to get it done in a quicker amount of time and then move to the next. So if you take that to a little bit further, it's, it's a tool that allows us to focus on the value stream. So we can connect that, those Kanban tickets to the value stream that you've got at work so that you can see your tickets around that value stream. If you've got multiple value streams, you might have different color tickets to give us that highlighting of what actions apply to what value stream. Moving on, uh, it allows us to visualize the work so we can see what's out there in front of it and therefore we can act better. And that's all Kanban is supposed to do is to show us the work and to put some rules around it. So having that work visualised, we can see what needs to be done. So starting out with, you know, what's ready to be worked, what is being done and what is, and what is done is a nice little basic board to start with. And limiting your work in progress to only two. So work on only two tasks at a time. Uh, personally, you, you'll be able to get more done. So applying this to your personal behaviour is a nice way to start learning how do I then take that to a team level. And we've all seen sort of software running teams, but I find the ticketing and posting is the way to go. And if you've seen onto my screen off to the side here, uh, there's my personal Kanban, not the one right behind me, but off to the side here is my ticketed program of the work that I'm doing. So it's something that can just take up on the wall right next to you, a very simple tool to apply. So that's personal Kanban. And if you've got any questions, once again, please contact TXM TV and uh, give us a call and, uh, or an email and we'll be able to talk a little bit further about it. And that's all I have for today, Anthony. Fantastic. How would um, how would that work, given that we're working from home? And uh, would you still use that personal campaign? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you, you, you need to keep track of everything because you might be interrupted with, you know, young ones at home or homeschooling activities whilst you're trying to do your own work. So having a place where your tasks are on memory on the wall is a nice reflection point as well. It keeps you on track. Excellent. Well, I can uh, I can imagine having a task there called uh, kick the football, and uh, and and make sure you have some lunch. Absolutely. But, uh, but it's also the the short term tasks and the and the ones that take a bit longer is, is what you work on. Yeah, so, uh, so thank you for tuning in today to TXM TV. Uh, please uh, write to us on TXMTV at TXM dot com. Uh, leave us a message on our LinkedIn page. And, uh, and tune in again uh, tomorrow for another episode of uh, TXM TV. I'm Anthony Klein, and thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Stay safe.